Hi, my name is Dana and today I'll be sharing with you my favorite reads of 2020. So I read 195 books in 2020, which I think is the most I have ever read in a single year ever at least according to Goodreads from what I have tracked and recorded. So I am very excited to share the books that I've ranked in order of what I believe is my favorite. Um, I think 2020, <laughs> according to when the pandemic really hit, I very much changed the way I started reading and switched to reading primarily romance novels. And I think those ended up being ranked emotionally for me a lot higher than some of the books that I may think are in in some ways are better books um just technically and the messages that they're sharing um you'll you'll get to see why I'm saying that later on um but these romance novels that I did rank extremely high in, were impactful to me and I think that's what makes a favorite book and a five-star read. Um, I definitely ended up rating things less five stars as the year went on. Um, I just got to be really picky towards the end of 2020. Um, and yeah, I, I, maybe I might try and do a video of just like discussing my reading year as a whole, maybe how I feel like I've changed as a reader throughout 2020. Um, but let's get on to my favorite books, starting at number 20 in this list. And for that, I'm going with Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. So I feel like these like first like five, 20 to like 15 are going to be books that you probably wouldn't expect from me. Um, so I, I think I started rereading the Immortal Instruments series, the Mortal Instruments series in 2018. And I was doing so because I wanted to finally get to this series. And so 2019, like I reread a lot of Cassandra Clare, um, and then I kind of fell off. And so 2020, I read this whole series. And I was hooked. I read one a month for like three months and I think Lady Midnight is really some of Cassandra Clare's best writing in terms of introducing so many new characters with all of their unique backstories while also feeling like we're still immersed in the same world of the other series um and I just fell in love with the Blackwood family um Blackwood right it's been so long Blackthorn, the Blackthorn family, the Lightwoods. It's too, too many names to remember. Um, it, I just couldn't put this one down. I loved everything about this book. I think the next two, I didn't love everything about them fully, but this one, this one was my favorite. I think that's making this list because I spent so long in that world this year that I like couldn't not. So number nine, so number 19 is With the Fire and High by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is the first book that I've read from her and I listened to the audiobook and she is a phenomenal writer. So this follows a teen who um, she gets pregnant really young and wants to go into culinary school when, after high school and she's in this culinary program. And it's really about the life that she has to deal with while being mature for her age and being a mother and going to school. Um, and I, I love that Elizabeth Acevedo's characters feel so real. Um, and this is told um, not in verse, um, but she she is such a like lyrical writer. Um, I adored this book and the character. Imani is, you know, I think... I definitely, Amani is not a perfect character, but I think that's the beauty of this story is that teenage girls aren't perfect and they're allowed to make mistakes and they're allowed to grow and it's a beautiful journey of living and 
dealing with what comes your way. So I, early on in the year, wanted to read a lot of different things. And one of the books that I picked up was a YA sci-fi, Girls with Sharp Sticks by Suzanne Young. So this is probably unlike anything else that I read this year. It's a YA sci-fi that is one of those books that is so unlike anything else I've read. Um, so this follows um, this these girls that are at this academy and a lot of the time as a reader you're kept in the dark with this book which I think is the beauty of it. Um, so I listened to this on audio and I just wanted to know what was going on. So it's this girl, these girls at this finishing academy and they're kind of being taught how to be a woman and go into society. But they're also kind of being auctioned off and there's a lot of things about this academy that don't make sense and don't add up and a lot of them can't really remember what happened to them before they got there. Um, and I think if you like I think it's Wilder Girls by Rory Powers. I think you would really like this. It's not horror, but it's just so pulls you in and you just need to know what's going on here. And I was kind of like floored when like the big reveals started happening. Um, it's so exciting and fun and the writing is fantastic. So another YA that I really adored reading this year was Far From the Tree by Robin Benway. So this, I listened to the audiobook, I believe, which I think was how I got through a lot of YA this year. Like, wasn't really into picking it up all the time. But this is a YA contemporary that follows um, three young teens who were all, all have the same mother, um, but were all given up by her. So the inciting incident of the story is that Grace, one of the teens, is pregnant and is thinking about giving up her child for adoption. So she's really struggling with the fact that she's in the, her mother's shoes and, you know, trying to figure out what was her mother thinking at the time she gave her up. Um, and then we also meet Maya, who is, her think her parents are going through a divorce. Um, and so she's dealing with that um, while also being, um, she's gay and, you know, dealing with being queer um, and, you know, wanting to, not sure if she really wants these newfound siblings. And then we have Joaquin who has a different father, I think, than the other two girls. And he wasn't adopted. He was in foster care through most of his life. And so he definitely feels like these two girls have a privilege that he never got and a family that he wished he had. And so he's finding himself in a position where he might be getting a forever home with a foster family. And he definitely is unsure of how to even interact in a family dynamic. Um, it's a gorgeous story that I, I just bawled at the end of. Not because it has a sad ending, but because the emotional depth of the story is so touching and heartfelt that I I just loved it so much. So coming up at number 16 is Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. So this is Elizabeth Acevedo's signature novel in verse. Um, she wrote the story inspired by an actual plane crash. Um, and so this tells a story of two girls whose father both died. Um, and, you know, it's not a huge spoiler to the story, but the girls realize that their father is one and the same. And so it's a story of sisterhood, but it's also a story of um, identity and privilege and class divides. Um, and it's fantastically told in Elizabeth Acevedo's like lyrical style. I couldn't put this down and I highly recommend the audiobook because Elizabeth does narrate one of the girls voices. So then we have my first ever read from Jason Reynolds coming in at number 15. So this is Long Way Down. I read this really quickly. It's a very short book um, because it's also a novel in verse. And I love the audiobook because Jason does narrate it. Um, so this follows um, a teen boy as he gets on an elevator and it's the 
the book is literally the amount of time it takes from him to get from the top floor to the bottom and it's a book about the complexities of being a black teen in a poor neighborhood and you know what it's like to deal with gun violence and the implications of revenge killings and gangs and it's an emotional story as every as different figures in his life get on the elevator and share their story but also impart some type of advice to him i it, it was incredible and i highly highly recommend it so now at 14 we're getting into all of my romance reads um i probably should have made these separate videos of like my favorite romances my favorite non-romances but romance really was special to me this year so it's you're, i know you probably stuck around for the romance books so number 14 is the roommate by rosie dannon so i read this in like one or two days and i could not put this down so this is a contemporary novel following clara who has moved across the country to be with her long-term friend crush um but finds out that he has moved out and there's a new guy who moved into his apartment in his room josh and josh is a porn star and clara is like this uptight girl who has never really experienced all that much in life and it's these two falling in love but also like pushing all of each other's buttons and it's funny and heartfelt and I love the way Rosie Dannon has kind of tried to show like a humanizing side of the porn industry for the actors working in it. So it was a fantastic story and I can't recommend it enough. One more YA on the list. Um, so number 13 is Slay by Brittany Morris. So this is a YA contemporary though it at times has like a sci-fi-ish feel because it follows a heroine who is a game what like video game developer but she's a teenager teenager in high school and she's hiding the fact that she's developed this entire online game um that's actually like invite only for other black people and what happens is someone gets hurt and killed i think in real life and the implications come out of like well is this racist because it's only allowed to like invite other black people which is ridiculous um and so she has all these conflicting feelings from the other people around her and the secret that she's holding of being <laughs> in charge of this whole game and community um and then she's also kind of falling in love with someone through the game it's fantastic and I loved it so much. And then at number 12 is You Had Me at Ola by Alexis Daria. So this is one of my favorite reads of the year because I fully just loved getting to see more Latinx representation in mainstream traditional publication for romance. So this is like a telenovela stars who meet on set, have like a terrible interaction um, and fall in love while um, the hero is hiding the fact that he has a son um, and it's a fantastic story. I, I know some people don't love the hero but I, I think I really felt like emotionally attached to this as a half Puerto Rican woman who could relate to a main character who at times felt like very comfortable in her culture but at times did not and yeah I love the audiobook. I love the fact that they are starring in this telenovela but also you get the scenes from the telenovela it like made for really great characterization felt very meta of like them acting in these scenes as characters also getting to know each other as people it's yeah i i really need to read more alexis daria because of this so at number 11 is the prince of broadway by joanna shoop i read a lot of joanna shoop books this year uh, mainly because I hosted Fall for Joanna Shoup where we read her Knickerbocker Club series um, but this is the second book in her Uptown Girl series. This follows Florence Green who is just such an incredible heroine who is outspoken and bold and vibrant and she takes what she wants and is 
unapologetic about it and a hero who just worships her and I feel like I've found that that is my brand of historical romance and romance in general like I need him to worship her um, and I also just love that it's like he's a rogue who I just I really adore like these bad boy men from the bad side of the town who just end up coming to their knees for her so adore this so much so because I hosted Summer of Sarah McLean and I read all of her books it was highly unlikely that we weren't gonna get at least a few on here so coming in at number 10 is 11 scandals to start to win a duke's heart this is the third book in counting by love by numbers love by numbers series by sarah mclean so this follows uh juliana and simon um juliana is the hero's sister of the series and simon is like the big bad duke who kind of hates everyone in the series and <laughs> she brings him to his knees she is vivacious and vibrant and young and she dares him throughout the series to like fall in love with her and he continuously doesn't want to because of propriety and scandal but she he just can't get enough of her and oh boy do I love it so much of all of the summer of Sarah McLean books this was the only book that I actually read before the week of reading started because I started it on like Friday or Saturday night and I binged it and finished it and stayed up until like five in the morning reading it and it just stuck with me of being a favorite and I don't know she did they did something for me I think I just really adored Juliana Simon is just like also like I love like a mean <laughs> mean hero <laughs> I don't know what that says about me Okay, so coming in at number nine, like I feel like a Melissa Cole book was bound to happen on a favorites list. This is Can't Escape Love. This is the, I don't remember which point it comes in, like two and, two and a half, maybe? I don't know. Um, but this follows Regina, um, Reggie, who is Portia's sister in the second book. Um, and so this is her HEA, and I, I love how much story and character Alyssa Cole is able to fit in an under 200 page book. Um, these are fully developed characters, and I love just how much diversity is in it. Um, the hero is Asian, the heroine is disabled and black, and it's so nerdy and sweet, and, uh, but it's also extremely sexy because disabled people are sexy um and yeah I just ugh, I love this so much and it's I, it couldn't be not on this list and then number eight we have another Joanna Shoup and it's Erin this is the second book in her Knickerbocker Club series I feel like I guess second books for her are my favorite so this follows Ava and Will Will is the brother of the first book and you really hate him in the first book and somehow Joanna Shoup just turns you around with this one. Ava is kind of a con artist um psychic and Will is a wealthy baron of industry in Gilded Age New York and he just can't stay away from this woman even as much as he wants her out of his life he wants her to like stay away from the guy who's running for governor and he's running for lieutenant lieutenant governor and it's just oh, so good there are so many really great sex scenes in this that like i was like how many are we gonna have but we keep going because it's joanna shoop and i i can't even like put words to like why i love this one so much it was just everything that I want in a romance. <laughs> so next up is one of my favorite contemporary novels of the year and it was a novella-ish and it's Bottle Rocket by Erin McClellan. This is the third in a series. It's her like so over the holidays series and so this is set in 4th of July, second chance romance following um, these cup this couple who had been together as teenagers 
um, fell apart when they both wanted different things going to college and they end up rekindling their romance on 4th of July weekend. It's so unique in its sex positivity um, and I just love that there's never like a real pressuring to like be someone else it's they're like the hero the heroine is totally okay if this is just a fling but it's the hero who needs to learn like to commit and be happy with the fact that he wants to Ugh, i just i loved it so much um i can't wait to read more of Aaron mccleland's books so this is number six and i feel like this is going to be like surprising to some it's daring in the duke by sarah mclean i fucking love this series. You know I do. I don't, like, I feel like I'm always talking about it. I reread Wicked in the Wallflower and Brazen the Beast, so that, like, if this was a books I read in 2020 for the first, for rereading too, I would totally have those on this list, but I tried to be like, you can't count rereads because I really read them the first time, whenever they came out. Um, so this is the conclusion to the Bare Knuckle Bastard series. It's a second chance romance. After rereading the first two books, I read this and then I reread the first two and then I read this again. It is so magical. All of the plot and points and details that Sarah McLean laid down in the first two books to really allow this grovel to occur. It's a whole grovel novel from start to finish. Ewan had so much to redeem and I really think Sarah McLean allows him to do that. And I just, I love Grace as a character. She burns down the patriarchy with this book, Sarah McLean, and I don't know how she's going to just keep outdoing herself with every book, but I know she will. This is, it's a culmination of so much with the series. And while it's not my favorite of her books, I think it's my favorite story arc for a series from her. So we're in the final countdown, the top five books. So coming in at number five is Briarly by Astor Glenn Gray. So this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling unlike anything I've ever read. Um, so it's a male-male romance following um, the Maurice character essentially of Beauty and the Beast as he's the one who stays at the Beast castle and his daughter does not come to save him or at least does not get taken in his place. Um, and it's this gorgeously written story of him trying to unravel Briarly as a character and their evolution to falling in love is so sweet and just endearing and I think of all of the romances I read this is probably like the least like of a romance in uh, like it's it's a romance there's an HEA um but it's very sweet and just beautiful and uh, it's like I can't it's so unforgettable of a read uh, I loved it so much so Coming in at number four is another Sarah McLean, and it's No Good Duke Goes Unpunished. This is the third in the Rules of Scoundrel series. I, I think this one felt so polarizing when we read it in Summer of Sarah McLean because it follows a heroine who is in some ways extremely unlikable. She is arranged to be married to this much older man as a young girl and decides that she's going to fake her death by <laughs> sleeping with the man's son and then pretending that she died <laughs> and it just gets blown out of proportion and the duke who has now inherited has kind of lived with the stigma of everyone thinks he viciously murdered this woman and he because she drugged him does not remember so there's some consent thing going on there um but this story of this, these two and the bargains that they make while he is kind of trying to redeem his reputation in society and she is just trying to like make a life for herself and take care of like she runs an orphanage and she has a pig it's like it's so sweet and then there's the sex scene in this like boxing ring it's this is like peak Sarah McLean of like everything she does is like balled into this of like the bare knuckle bastards and um the this actual rules of scoundrel series is it's fantastic 
read the whole series through because it has like a really great series arc um but this one is magical so coming in at number three i feel like this one people might expect on this list is take a hint danny brown by talia hibbert i adore talia Hibbert's books and i'm just excited to read more and more of them so this is the second book after get a life chloe brown and i i love the diversity in her books but also just a fake dating trope does something for me and um zaf is just a perfect hero and i love i love that tali hippert's heroines really go through a growth and a journey through her books but uh, zaf was just like a big teddy bear who reads romance novels and wants to help kids and he's so sweet and i want one of my own <laughs> so the top two books that i read this year so coming in at number two is the pursuit of by courtney milan this is an mm historical romance set during the revolutionary war or post-revolutionary war and it follows these two men who meet on the battlefield um one is a freed slave and the other is a gentleman of the british army and the British soldier is so funny because he does not want to be there. He's the least likely to do any kind of fighting ever. And he is just trying to talk his way out of getting killed. And the black hero, he just wants to get home to his family. And that's all he cares about. And it's these two going on this journey of the black hero going home and falling in love along the way and like opening up to each other, but also becoming friends. And there was this whole big like bit about this like stinky cheese that is hysterical, but just heartwarming and I can't recommend it enough. Like I'm almost like in tears talking about it. <laughs> I loved it that much. And then I, I feel like if you really like know me, you are gonna know that this was my favorite book of the year. It, I couldn't stop talking about how much I love it so long. It's Nine Rules to Break When Romancing a Rake. This is Sarah McLean's first adult historical romance novel and I read it for the first time during Summer of Sarah McLean and I think Summer of Sarah McLean definitely changed my year and has made me not just a better reader but a better like writer of critique in books but also like I've made so many incredible friends and I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for that and I know this has made my year so much more enjoyable. Um, you know, I talk about books on the daily for professional reasons, but also on my like fun times. But I think, you know, it's finding outlets this year has been what's definitely gotten me through it um, and not leaving my house and not having anyone else to talk to. Um, and so A, finding the community through Summer of Sarah McLean by just like happenstance has made me so happy um and I think a lot of that has been, I put on to this book but I love this book because it's a wallflower and a rake and we have a wallflower who is just so interested in getting out of her own way and experiencing things for the first time um she's plus size she's older and then we have this rake who is so just engrossed by her that like he 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 just wants to like experience all of these things with her and he worships her um and her name is Calpurnia but she likes to go by Callie and he calls her empress throughout the series throughout the book and like obviously the series because they pop up again um and I love the just the sexiness of this book but also like I love seeing a heroine who is a wallflower go on this journey and I think that's why we were so excited to do Winter of the Wallflower because of Callie. I just there's something about the rules she goes through of like wanting to you know win someone um, but it's all about it's not about him it's not about a man like it's all for her and I love it so much. So those were the 20 books that I wanted to gush about for 
so long. Um, thank you so much for watching. I would love to know if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them, um, and I would love to know what your favorite read of the year was in the comments below. Um, so yeah, I am like emotionally drained after talking about these books. <laughs> Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.